Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome to the Michael Cutler Hour. I am your host, Michael Cutler. It is August the 24th, 2018. Summer drawing to a close, and uh, here we are um, trying to make sense of the craziness that we've been witnessing all week. Uh, but this is really just an extension of what's been going on for far too long throughout our great country. Um, so we're going to get right to it, but I want to remind everybody, if you're not familiar with me, a little bit of my background. I'm a retired senior special agent with what used to be the Immigration and Naturalization Service, the INS. And um, for 30 years, I worked in various positions. I was an immigration inspector for four years. I spent a year as an adjudications officer. And then I rotated through all the divisions, all the squads within the investigations branch in New York City, including uh, being the first INS agent assigned to Unified Intelligence at DEA. And then I was promoted to senior special agent that assigned to the Organized Crime Drug Enforcement Task Force. So when I speak about immigration, I'm speaking about it from the insider's view, and that's something that you're not going to probably hear in too many other places. Uh, lots of folks come on the air, you know, they say opinions are like backsides, everyone's got one, but I promise you that when I provide opinions, I will provide you with an understanding of why I have the opinion that I have. If I can't back up the opinion, then I'm not going to tell it to you. Uh, I don't believe in hunches. As an agent, I didn't go out there and arrest people uh, because I had a hunch. Uh, probably one of the most egregious things that I've been hearing, in fact, and I have to make this point, um, from the folks calling for the disbanding of ICE, is that the people who are demanding that we stop enforcing immigration laws and we stop making any effort to enforce our borders, and believe me, these are minimal efforts, <clears throat> and it's obvious these are minimal efforts, how else do we wind up with unknown tens of millions of illegal aliens in the United States? How else could we wind up with terrorists getting naturalized, getting political asylum. The system is failing, but we'll get to get to the problem that we really have, because in my view, the system is only failing if you think immigration is a law enforcement system, and it's not. That's the mistake that all of us have been making. We all think that immigration is law enforcement. It's not, uh, I'm going to surprise you in a little bit and explain to you what immigration really is from my vantage point. But the thing is that when people talk about dismantling immigration and taking down the borders and how unfair it is, what they're really calling for is national suicide. Uh, if you look at the borders of the countries around the world, the vast majority of those borders were not drawn in crayon or pencil. They were drawn in blood. Most international borders were established as the result of war, conflict, soldiers dying. That someone didn't just take out a sketch pad and say, yeah, we'll just put a line here and a line there. It doesn't work that way. Those borders are the result of armed conflict. Now, we can't go out into the world and say, we're going to be nice and smile at you and give you everything you want, and you're going to be treating us equally well. Try that with North Korea. In fact, try it with China. Try it with Russia. See how it works out. It's like trying to compromise with a terrorist who's holding you hostage. It's like trying to do that with the guy that robs the bank. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk our way out of this robbery. There's dead bodies on the floor, but we'll have a conversation. It is naive beyond words to think that we could just smile at our enemies and invite them into the country, and when they see what wonderful people we are, they will lay down their arms and say, we love you, America. Let's stop fighting. If you think that's reality, get help immediately. Go to a psychiatrist. Have yourself admitted to a mental ward. Let them put you in a room with lots of padding because you're nuts. I wish it worked that way, but it doesn't. You can't appease your enemies and expect a good outcome. We saw that with the Chamberlain and the Second World War. Appeasing Hitler. Boy, did that work out well. So when you see this insanity, the people saying, oh, these poor immigrants, and it's not fair to make them all sound like bad guys because a couple of them have done some crimes. Folks, this is either delusional or people who want to wreak havoc on America. People are motivated by different things. As an immigration agent, as a law enforcement officer, and I didn't only enforce immigration law, I enforced narcotics laws and so forth, <clears throat> you always look to motivation. Why did the guy cross the street in the middle of the street that he had to run across the traffic and so forth? You know, the old joke, why did the chicken cross the road? Well, some guy doesn't just randomly run across the street uh, with cars coming in both directions. Maybe he's meeting someone. Maybe there's something that there's got to be a reason. People don't just do things if they're rational. So you always look for motivation. 
Now, I do believe that a lot of our fellow Americans are naive. I've had enough conversation with well-intentioned naive people. They think if we just sang Kumbaya, all of our problems would vanish. It doesn't work that way. I wish it did. It doesn't. Some people are willing to accept con games because this whole thing has been a massive con game, immigration. That's how people wind up with an email that says, congratulations, you've just won $10 million. Just send us $5,000 and write down your social security number, your date of birth, your home address, the name of your first school, the name of your first pet, your wife's maiden name, your mother's maiden name, you know, and they send it out. And the next thing they know, their bank account gets cleaned out because some guy assumes their identity, cashes the check. Oh, and by the way, the $5 million or the $10 million never gets mailed. Now, if they only stop to ask a couple of questions, maybe they could have prevented this catastrophe from befalling them. For example... How did you win a lottery if you didn't buy a damn ticket? Let's start with the fundamentals. And if they're going to give you millions of dollars, why are you sending them any money? Just have them deduct whatever the costs are off the amount they're going to send you. You know, when people win a legitimate lottery ticket, they don't get the full amount. They get the amount minus the taxes that they have to pay. That's what's rational and reasonable. How did they get their email address, this outfit, that gave them a ticket for a lottery to which they didn't buy a ticket. See, if you ask those three questions, this whole scam stops working. It stops working. But nobody questions the lies about immigration, at least on the other side. And then you have people on the other side that are greedy. And they're not just from the right or the left. They're from both sides. When I write articles for Front Page Magazine, and I'm very proud that I've been a columnist for Front Page now for several years, David Horowitz Freedom Center does tremendous work. They're worthy of support. I, uh, I'm proud to be associated with the Horowitz Freedom Center. But some of the comments, oh, it's always the libertards, you know, meaning the, the liberals, the libertards. Sure. And, and so we have the Koch brothers standing shoulder to shoulder with George Soros wanting to approve DACA, wanting to flood America with cheap labor. Both sides are making out literally and figuratively like bandits. They are. And we'll see why in a moment, but before we even look at that, I want to, and if you went to my uh, the website, the link to Blog Talk Radio, you'll know I wrote three articles for Front Page Magazine just this week. It's been a very busy week. I slaved over a hot keyboard. If you like the articles that I write, please do me a favor. Do yourself a favor. Do your friends a favor. Forward them to as many people as you can. I don't care if you use Facebook. I don't care if you do it by email. I don't care if you call somebody up. I don't care if you make a a, a photo stat and send it to someone, you know, fax it over. I want you to be part of my bucket brigade of truth. We've got to get our voices heard. I'm very pleased that tonight I'll be on the Ingram Angle on Fox News, 10 o'clock New York time. I don't know where you are or when they air it, but Fox News, the Ingram Angle. Uh, Laura Ingram will not be there, but Jason Chaffetz, former member of Congress, will be filling in. And I'm in the uh, first segment, which is going to be to talk about this horrific murder of that young girl, Molly Tibbetts. And it brings me to tears. I lived through 9-11, senseless deaths because we wouldn't enforce our immigration laws, senseless deaths. We still aren't enforcing the immigration laws. We still aren't learning the lessons of 9-11. That's why you had the Boston Marathon attack. That's why you had the San Bernardino attack. That's why we've had other attacks. That's why we have criminals wandering freely in the United States. <clears throat> because the greed has surpassed any moral compass that the people with the real power in this country possess. They want cheap labor. They want cheap labor. They want more than that, too. We'll get to it momentarily. But I just want to talk about this case. Then I'll tell you why the immigration system is what it is. And I will tell you it is anything but a failure. Fasten your seatbelt. The immigration system is the most successful bureaucracy in the entire federal government. Maybe surpasses NASA. I kid you not. You're probably sitting there scratching your head and saying, well, what's this guy Cutler thinking about? Wait till you hear my theory. It'll blow you away if you haven't heard me say this elsewhere before. But Molly Tibbetts was just killed. We had Kate Steinle before her, according to the media. But what the media is not telling you is that murders like this don't just happen once every couple of years. They don't happen once every couple of weeks or once every couple of months. Folks, they're happening multiple times a day multiple times a day across the United States, not just in the so-called border st cities or the border states. That's another lie. We're a country of 50 border states. Why the focus on the Mexican border? It's all part of the immigration con game. They know that most Americans are selfish. If you don't live in California, New Mexico, Texas, um, who am I leaving out, or Arizona, 
then it shouldn't matter to you because this is a Mexican problem, which leads to charges of racism, which leads to everybody being confused about what the issues are. This is a con game. We have 50 border states, and believe it or not, according to statistics we have, and I don't trust any of these statistics, the city with the largest number of illegal aliens is nowhere near the Mexican border. In fact, it's my hometown, New York City. Look how far we are from the Mexican border. How could that possibly happen? So we hear all these lies and all the nonsense, and they, they will occasionally, the media, will seize on a terrible tragedy, particularly when the person who dies is very attractive, very young, and so it, it's shocking. But the news media are the gatekeepers to information. Most of what we know about the events that are happening around the world are not events that we witness personally. I mean, how many times have you personally, whoever you are out there listening to me, how many times have you actually witnessed a newsworthy event? You saw the event, you went home, and there it was on the news. You know, the A block, the first story, bango, you were there. Maybe there was a bank robbery. Maybe there was a horrific car accident. So you were there. But day after day, news report after news report, we are depending on others to provide us with the information. You know, they always say, you know, the, the question is, if the tree falls in the forest, there's nobody there, does it make a sound? I have a better question. If a tree falls in the forest and the reporters aren't willing to write about it, does anybody know the tree fell? Because if for some reason the reporters don't write about it, who knows? Nobody. The death of innocent people by people who shouldn't be present in the United States is an epidemic. It numbers in the thousands if you include drunk drivers, drivers with no licenses, and so forth. Now, the open borders folks will counter this and what they will say to you, and I'm probably going to hear it today when I go on the Ingram program because I'm going to be debating somebody on this very issue, I'm sure I'm going to hear Americans commit murder. It's not just radical Islamists who commit terror attacks. It's the right-wing nutcases who do it. And the answer is they're completely right. Not gonna, you're not going to get an argument from me. Um, lots of people die from cancer, so why bother treating heart disease because something's going to get them sooner or later. That's the reasoning. It makes no sense. If you could cut the homicide rate in half by whatever percentage, why wouldn't you do it? Why wouldn't you do it? And it's easy. If you keep people out who have a proclivity to crime and violence, you help to make the city safer or the states safer or our country safer. Why in the world is it that difficult to understand? Of course, keeping out criminal aliens won't completely solve the problem. All of the problems of the United States are kind of like the article that I wrote about border security. You know, we were being sold, uh, the average American was, on the idea that the biggest problem about immigration was the Mexican border, and if we just put up some kind of a, 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 a security issue on the Mexican border, if we dealt with that, immigration would be solved. Baloney. Nearly half of all illegal aliens don't run the border. They come through international airports or other ports of entry violate the terms of their admission. Aliens stow away on ships and enter the United States. Aliens run the Canadian border. Aliens get onto little boats that meet other boats outside our territorial waters and bring them to shore. We probably have airplanes landing at strips in the middle of the night um, where they're not being inspected. The ability for a foreign national to enter the United States illegally is limitless. I once wrote an article a long time ago, you know, Paul Revere, uh, the Wadsworth um, poem, One If By Land, Two If By Sea. If you had to put a lantern in the Old North Church for every way that an alien could enter the United States to do us harm, you would quickly find that Home Depot or Lowe's wouldn't have enough lanterns. And if you lit them all at the same time, you'd probably set fire to the Old North Church. <clears throat> the bad guys are limited only by their imagination, creativity, and resourcefulness. So the trick is we've got to address all the issues. Crime is certainly not only committed by illegal aliens. Anybody who believes that is crazy. But a sizable amount of the crime that we deal with is related to failures of the immigration system. So the way you take bites out of crime is you address the vulnerabilities one at a time. If you have a house and you're worried about burglars, you secure your front door, you secure your back door, you lock each and every window. If you have a skylight, you make sure that that's secure so nobody can climb in through the skylight. Each method of entry into your home needs to be addressed because otherwise, if you leave just one, one place, they'll find the one place. How many holes do you need, in the bottom, need on the bottom of your boat for the boat to wind up in the bottom of the lake? Only one hole. 
So the argument that you're hearing from the other side is the equivalent of saying, well, if you have a hole in the bottom of your boat, maybe what you should do is drill more holes to let the water out. Now, that's a pretty funny image, but that's really what we're being told. The Reagan amnesty was catastrophic. He should have known that uh, I wasn't a big fan of Ronald Reagan. I know there's a lot of conservative folks out there. And by the way, as Americans, let's celebrate being Americans by disagreeing once in a while and still respecting each other. I don't have to agree with you all the time. You don't have to agree with me all the time. I was going to teach debate on the college level when I had the opportunity to become a federal agent, so I went for that career path. Uh, but I was on the debating teams in high school, college, did quite well, very proud of it. But debate is as American as apple pie. It's all about the First Amendment, freedom of speech, the right to peaceable assemblage, the right to disagree. We're losing that ability to disagree because everybody wants to listen to the echo chamber. If you're a conservative, you only listen to Fox News. If you're a wacko from the left, you're going to listen to, you know, whatever. If you're, it doesn't work that way. We need to listen to everyone's opinions because everyone doesn't always get it right. <clears throat> and a broken clock is right every 12 hours as well. So we need to be able to understand it. But for decades, we've been sold a bogus notion that the Mexican border is the issue. It started out because the Border Patrol was the key agency for immigration law enforcement. The Border Patrol got the lion's share of the money and the attention. As an immigration agent in New York City, most of the vehicles that we had were Border Patrol rejects. The Border Patrol would beat the hell out of those cars. They put 130,000 miles on the odometer. They raced them down the highways, chasing the smugglers. Half of those cars, I swore, could drive sideways. They were so destroyed. And they would take it into some body shop, and they, they'd put a $39 paint job on it to conceal the green and white color scheme, and, and that was the cars that we had. They were disastrous. They broke down every other week. Why? Because the Border Patrol had the political clout. And it made sense to the politicians, because then they could take a picture with the Border Patrol and say, I just voted to fund more Border Patrol agents. Meanwhile, interior enforcement is at least as important as Border Patrol. Border Patrol does very important work. I went to Border Patrol Academy. <clears throat> but there are only one hole in that immigration colander. Illegal aliens commit crime that represents another hole in a different colander, the criminal justice colander. And then you have all sorts of criminals from within the United States and all sorts of crimes. But if you could get rid of a big chunk of the criminal population, aliens who come to the United States with the intentions of doing crime, why wouldn't you? You know, shopkeepers and, and department stores employ people to help them to pr what they call loss prevention. It's a big industry, loss prevention. The big, industry, the big companies, the big corporations, the big department stores very often hire retired police and retire federal agents because loss prevention costs them tons of money. So, so think of the problems they have. It's very similar to the immigration problem. If you own a store... You need foot traffic. If you're a florist or if you make sandwiches or, or if you sell jewelry, you need people to come into the store. Forget the Internet for the moment. Let's, let's go back to the older days. You need foot traffic to come into the store and make the purchase. If no one walks into your store, you're going out of business. So you have a love-hate relationship with your customers. Now, why do I call it love-hate? Because some customers want to shop, but they don't want to pay. That's a problem. It's called theft. So the stores put up cameras. And where clothing is concerned, they have these big tags. And if you don't take off the tag and you walk through the doors, they have detectors that go off and alert the, the store detectives so they can grab you and charge you with shoplifting. That's what it's about. They put the tags in. If you want to buy a big buck item, maybe a wristwatch or the electric shavers, boy, those prices have gone through the roof. They generally put them in glass showcases. Or if you go to Best Buy, the headphones, they don't just leave them on the counter because they're going to walk away. So they put them in a locked glass enclosure, and if you want it, then a salesperson comes over, opens up the enclosure, takes those you know, three or $400 headphones, walks them over to the cashier, and you follow them, and you pay for it. Why do they do that? So that you don't just slip it into your pocket and walk out the store without paying. So the idea is what measures do you need to use so that people don't come into your store and rob you blind? I understand that America depends on tourism. It's a major industry, billions and billions of dollars. And I'm all for it. I love tourism. I like to travel. I hope people want to come to America. But like the shopkeeper, you don't want people coming to America who want to rob us, rob us of our lives, rob us of our children, rob us of our peace of mind, rob us of our futures and our share of the American dream. We don't want that theft to take place. That's the responsibility of immigration agents. Those are the agents that the loonies on the left want to see fired, disbanded, 
Those are the people that they're yelling about and calling immigration agents Nazis and all this crazy nonsense, Nancy Pelosi and Wacky Maxi. I mean, holy smoke. They vilify agents and put their lives on the line each and every day, arresting people who would just as soon kill the agent as anything else. I've arrested some very dangerous people. I've arrested people wanted for murder in other countries. They have very little to lose. Because in other countries, when you are a murderer, you may not survive. They may execute you. And it may not happen through the criminal justice system. We live in a very difficult world. But we've arrested people wanted for stone-cold murders. I've arrested people who told me flat out, yeah, I, I killed somebody. Those people have nothing to lose when you arrest them. And you go out there knowing you're putting your life on the line. I remember we deported a Russian mobster, and the concern was that some hitman might try to take him out because there were concerns by the Russian mob that if he got back to Russia, he might actually cooperate with the prosecutors. And I ran a detail where we took the guy off the back of an airplane so we didn't have to walk him through the terminal because the concern was that there might have been somebody who snuck into the terminal with a gun. That's the real-life world of immigration law enforcement. So we literally walked this guy across the tarmac uh, with, a, with a team of armed agents and put him on a Russian airplane without going through the terminal. Why? Because the concerns were that somebody would try to, to take him out, literally kill him. So the agents that do that job, and I'm no hero, I'm just trying to do my job just like everybody else. But imagine turning on the TV and listening to Pelosi talk about how these agents are bigots and racists, and this is about bigotry and racism. Our immigration laws have nothing to do with racism or bigotry. And I'll tell you right up front, if for a heartbeat I thought our immigration laws were about racism, I couldn't have lasted 30 seconds, let alone 30 years. Those laws treat everybody the same, everybody equally. Don't believe the lies. And, and those lies are dangerous. They're dangerous because assaults on immigration agents have more than doubled since the idiot left has gone out there with this campaign of lies and obfuscation. And there's nothing politically correct about it. This is Orwellian. Human beings think with words, so if you can alter the language, you alter the thoughts. This is about thought control, folks. This is about totalitarianism and fascism. It's very simple. And we look at this particular case, the killing of Molly Tibbetts. And I have a piece in the works. It should be up on Front Page Magazine, I'm hoping, this week. But here's what the media is not talking about. And I hope to make some of these points this evening when I'm over at Fox News. But this guy didn't only apparently run our border. I want you to think about this. We think we know what his name is. We think we know what his name is. But we're not sure. According to the media, it's Christian Bahena Rivera. Christian, by the way, spelled sideways. C-R-I-S-T-H-I-A-N. God knows. I mean, people do get creative with the spelling of their names. But it turned out that he worked for an employer who first said he used E-Verify, then he didn't use E-Verify, then he used some other screening mechanism. I don't know how he screened him or didn't screen him. But now the claim is he used an alternative identity. Identity theft is one of the fastest growing crimes in America. Why? Well, you have people that are looking to, to, to rob people's bank accounts. That's an old story. But you also have millions upon millions of illegal aliens that want fake ID or, for, or identities, real identities, but in their names, they're imposters. Because if they want a name where the name, the date of birth, and Social Security all line up, like the three um, things in the slot machine, you know, they, they want all three to line up. The only way that you can be sure, certain that's going to happen is if you steal the identity of a viable person. So there are records for that Social Security number with that name and that date of birth. In some cases, by the way, one name has been used hundreds of times by many illegal aliens. It's a crazy world we're living in. And the people whose identities have been stolen, um, the chaos it creates, the suffering and the pain. Um, I, I've read cases where somebody is on you know, disability. They're paralyzed. And suddenly, the computer says that they're working and they're making $30,000 a year while they're getting disability. And, and, and that gets flagged. And the next thing you know, the guy in a wheelchair who can't wiggle his fingertips is being, you know, they're issuing an arrest warrant because the guy apparently defrauded the system because on the one hand he said he's disabled, but on the other hand he made $30,000 last year. Guess what happened? Someone stole his identity. It's a mess. And then try to get a loan after that happens to you. A lot of this has to do with illegal immigration. So this guy apparently committed identity theft, this pillar of the community that his lawyer is jumping up and down. Don't you dare call him an illegal alien. Really? I have other words I'd like to use to describe this piece of detritus, this quote-unquote alleged killer, although the newspaper accounts say that he, he already said that he did it, but that he blacked out. 
Sure he did. I'm blacked out right now talking to you folks. I'm unconscious. You're hearing me talking in my sleep. And the lies just keep on coming. And the dead bodies keep piling up. Here's the part of the story that no one's going to talk about. This is how I see things because I was an INS agent for 30 years. This is what I want you to think about. This is what I want you to tell your friends over dinner this weekend. This guy has been in custody now for roughly a week, right? We still don't know when he entered the United States. We have ICE agents looking at him. We have detectives looking at him. We have everyone looking at this guy. And the best they can say is he came in somewhere between four and seven years ago. Well, why is that important? It's very important. DACA is still on the menu. Everyone has been lied to. Oh, it's about the kids. We've got to help the children, the young people. Do you know how old an alien can be and still apply for DACA right now? It's going to shock you, but it's 37. It was 31 when Obama made that dreadful speech back in 2012 in the uh, Rose Garden. We're going to take care of the kids, the children. You could be 31 years old back then. The DREAM Act was for about the kids. The cutoff for the age there was 35. Why 35? Because demographers said 35 would cover 90% of the illegal alien population. It was never about the children. That's just the sham. That's just the cover story. The guy breaks into a factory. What are you doing here? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm lost. I'm looking for the bathroom. Meanwhile, he's casing the joint because his buddies are going to break in the next day and, and, and steal whatever. It's a cover story. The cover story, it's about the children. It was never about the children. If it was about the children... I might have agreed with it. If President Obama had said, you know what, if you're under the age of 18 and you're attending school in the United States, go to an immigration office, we'll see if we can work with you. I might have supported that. You fingerprint them. It's a, it's a, a known universe. We've got the, their, their school ID. We can figure out who they are. There will be a small enough number that we could probably do some investigations and, and figure out who we're dealing with. Why did they make it 35? Well, I just told you. Because it would cover the great majority of all the illegal aliens in the United States. It was never about the kids. That's just the BS nonsense, the subterfuge, the con game that they're playing. So if we can't figure out how long this guy has been in the United States, and everyone's been looking at him for a week, how in the world could the adjudications officers deal with millions upon millions upon millions of DACA applications when there'd be so many that there would be no interviews. There were no interviews in the initial DACA program, by the way. Okay? No interviews, no field investigations. Well, maybe one or two here and there just because. But, but the vast, vast, vast majority, you know, 98%, whatever, no interviews, no field investigations. All the alien has to do is put down the right answers to the right questions on a form. How old were you when you entered the United States? 14. Bango, he qualifies. How old are you now? 36. Well, that's good because... Age 37 is the cutoff. He's in. Next. So we have people. We don't know who they are. We don't know when they got here. We'd be giving them ID. Now, I want you to think about something. After 9-11, and we're coming up on the 17th anniversary, and it's hard to believe so many years has passed. After 9-11, everyone stood there and said, to, get it, to, to, to attack us again, the terrorists only need to be right once. For us to be safe, our people have to be right 100% of the time, ladies and gentlemen. Every alien who enters the United States legally, illegally, stowing away on a ship, coming in with a tourist visa, I don't care. Once they're in the country, they're in. Every single alien who enters the country provides a terrorist organization with the opportunity of getting it right. Every alien who gets a green card, political asylum, U.S. citizenship, permission to go to flight school, every alien who gets an immigration benefit creates an opportunity the terrorists are desperate to achieve. Every single time. And we have politicians from both parties screaming, the children, the children. And it could turn into millions and millions and millions. Are they that stupid? Well, some of them are. I've met politicians who need someone to help them cross the street, I swear to God. But there's something else going on here. And this is what is really happening that I promised you that I would tell you during my program. Immigration is not a law enforcement system to George Soros. The immigration system is not a law enforcement system to the Koch brothers, nor to Zuckerberg, nor to Bill Gates, nor to the CEOs of major corporations in Silicon Valley or elsewhere. The immigration system is not a system of laws and law enforcement for the globalists who want cheap, exploitable labor. You know what the immigration system really is? And this is why I, lay claim, I will claim that it's the most efficient system in the entire federal government. 
sit down, put on your seatbelt. Immigration is the most efficient delivery system in the United States of America. It eclipses FedEx, UPS, the post office combined. And what does it deliver? Glad you asked. It delivers an unlimited number of cheap, exploitable foreign workers. And not just the illegals that do the gardening and washing dishes and all the bottom rung jobs. Immigration increasingly is being used to flood America with high-tech workers from India and other third world countries. Last year, the United States admitted 152,000 Chinese STEM students. They get to work in the United States for a couple of years. They supplant, they displace American workers. They're a lot cheaper. Even if they get the same pay, they're not covered by workmen's compensation and all those other fees that they have to pay for Americans or lawful immigrants if you're an employer. It didn't cover them for Obamacare either. They didn't count because they weren't Americans and not lawful immigrants, not part of the program. So an employer who hires a student programmer rather than a professional programmer, maybe the guy's not as proficient, but you never know, they're saving huge bucks, even if they were to give them the same paycheck, and I assure you they're not. They generally pay them a third, maybe even less, of what they would pay a seasoned worker. Now, you get what you pay for, but if all you need are, are grunt workers who you can sit down and say, this is what you're going to do, it's repetitive, it's stupid, but it's programming, it knocks Americans out of the box. It causes billions and billions of dollars to be wired out of the United States. It adversely impacts our balance of payment, jacks up our national debt, undermines our national security. I, I believe there were over 170,000 uh, Indian pro, uh, STEM students admitted to the United States. China comes in number two behind India. The goal, educate all these people, and then you have people like Mitt Romney saying, it. they will staple green cards onto their diplomas, and we can let them work in America. What great news for American programmers who are losing their jobs and their ability to support their own families. So, the immigration system is a delivery system that delivers an unlimited supply of cheap, exploitable foreign labor. Last point about foreign labor, there's no compassion and exploitation. So don't fall for that trap. This is about exploitation. Cheap labor, labor we can work to death, labor that we can put into terrible conditions, but compared to what they have back home, this is great. So they're happy to work for a fraction of the wage they should be getting under very terrible working conditions. Now, number two, the immigration system delivers a virtually unlimited supply of foreign tourists. That's why the visa waiver program was created under President Reagan. Now, if you look at the 9-11 Commission report, they said the visa process needed to be tightened up. On 9-11, there were 26 visa waiver countries. You would think after that recommendation, the visa program would have been terminated. Wrong again. Today, there are 38 countries that participate in the visa waiver program. Both President George W. Bush and Barack Obama increased the number of countries participating in the visa waiver program. Not surprisingly, that did not happen under the Trump administration. More reasons why... Both sides of the aisle hate President Trump. They're globalists. He's not. He believes in sovereign borders. They don't. I would argue that probably the last president who believed in sovereign borders was Dwight Eisenhower. We've had decades and decades of globalist politicians in the Oval Office. The immigration system also delivers a, um, an unlimited supply of foreign students then, or virtually unlimited, millions of foreign students in the United States. So that makes the schools happy. There's over, I think, 8,000 schools that are certified to admit, to admit students on foreign visas, student visas. Unbelievable. We have people coming to the United States from the other side of the planet learning how to give dogs haircuts, and they get student visas for that. Does that make sense to anybody? Of course not. But it's about getting people into the United States, and once they're here, they go missing, and they go missing because we don't have enough agents to look for them. The final part of the puzzle, and I've spoken about it before, we're going to talk about it right now, and when the politicians say we've got to get the aliens out of the shadows, what they're really saying is we've got to get them into the law offices of immigration lawyers all over the United States because many members of Congress are either immigration lawyers or have friends who are immigration lawyers or perhaps are getting campaign contributions from immigration lawyers. Forget ambulance chasing. These people are coyote chasing, coyote smugglers. Huh? So they want all those aliens to have an incentive to go running to the immigration lawyers to give them business. 
And that was why comprehensive immigration reform, by the way, would have provided money to pay for the lawyers. Not because we're being nice to the aliens. This country isn't nice to anybody unless your name is Zuckerberg or Gates or, or Greenspan or whomever. No, this was about making certain the lawyers get paid. An illegal alien working for minimum wage probably has three nickels to rub together if he or she has done well. It's not about that. The lawyers want to get paid. What's the best way to guarantee a fat paycheck for the lawyers? Have Uncle Sam pay the legal fees. So this is really what the immigration system is. It's a delivery system that delivers an unlimited supply of cheap, exploitable labor, an unlimited supply of foreign tourists, a huge number of foreign students, and a limitless supply of clients for immigration lawyers. And when you look at it from that perspective, is the immigration system broken? Or is it running with great precision like a Swiss watch? I would argue that this damn thing works better than Amazon, the Amazon Fulfillment Center. The Immigration Service is the Attorney Fulfillment Center, the Cheap Labor Exploiter Fulfillment Center. That's what this is about. And if you look at the farms, they want lots of illegal aliens to work on the farms. Do you know why we keep getting sick when we eat produce? Because there's quite a few farms that work illegal aliens like beasts of burden. There were stories about it in some liberal publications, Atlantic and so forth, about the tomato farms where the aliens slept in the back of pickup trucks. They had cold water for showers, and if they were lucky, they might have had two meals a day, and they were worked to death in the fields. They weren't even allowed to take bathroom breaks. Can you see where that's going? So imagine if the fields become a bathroom. Want to eat that food? You probably are. How shocking is that? So we have illegal aliens working in the farms, sometimes with the complicity of the employer, sometimes without. Um, I worked on a case several years ago involving a farm that after I did my own investigation when the lawyers contacted me, I became convinced, had no idea they hired illegal aliens. Why do I believe that? I checked out the living and working conditions. Their workers were being put up in housing that had swimming pools, had a physical fitness center. They weren't being paid minimum wage, but prevailing wage. When have you ever seen that? And I'm going to guess that the farm that I'm descri describing ran afoul maybe of some politicians because this case never should have gone forward. Uh, I worked on this investigation for several months. The two farm managers were acquitted of all 15 counts of their indictments. I was very disturbed by the investigation because generally when you have employers who have a pattern of hiring illegal aliens, it's quick to see what's going on. There's exploitation, inhumane conditions. We go down the list. None of that were apparent here at all. So understand what we're really dealing with. And it cost this girl her life. And now you've got the folks on the left saying, don't you dare exploit this case to make all immigrants sound bad. And I'm going to agree with that. Let's stop making all immigrants sound terrible, because they're not. Immigrants are wonderful. Immigrants, may shock you, are less likely to commit crimes than American citizens. Immigrants tend to be law-abiding. We're not talking about immigrants, boys and girls. We're talking about illegal aliens. Whole different game. It's like saying that anybody who walks into a bank and walks out with money is a customer. You believe that? How about the bank robber? Is he a customer? Is he making an undocumented withdrawal? You see, the people that are screaming that we are undermining the acceptance of immigrants into the community are responsible for the reason that people are angry about immigrants living in their communities because these individuals, these anarchists, refuse to draw that clear but essential distinction between lawful immigrants and illegal aliens. They're not interchangeable. They are not one and the same. The difference between an immigrant and an illegal alien is comparable to the difference between a house guest and a burglar. But ha they would have you believe that there is no difference. So who is really undermining the acceptance of immigrants in communities across the United States? It's the word smiths, the Orwellian word smiths who say to you, don't you dare use the word alien. Unless, of course, it's in conjunction with the DREAM Act, because the A in DREAM Act, that acronym is ALIEN, as in ALIEN MINERS. So suddenly the word ALIEN is acceptable when we can link it to the American dream. But otherwise, we're going to call everybody an immigrant. Words matter. Laws matter. The truth matters. The truth matters. But you're not getting the truth from most journalists. What you're getting are lies and propaganda. And it's not political correctness. It's purely out of the pages of George Orwell. They're obfuscating the truth 
so they could achieve a goal that is not in our best interest. This isn't a statement of xenophobia. If you look at the grounds for excluding aliens, go to Title VIII, United States Code, Section 1182. You don't have to write it down. You can read my articles. It's there. I provide all these nice, big, fat links. That's why I ask you, please forward my articles to as many people as you can. There's only one version of the truth, folks. Title VIII, United States Code, Section 1182, deems aliens with dangerous communicable diseases or severe mental illness to be inadmissible. Remember, Ellis Island was a quarantine station. Aliens who are criminals, human traffickers, drug smugglers, gun runners, murderers, rapists, child molesters, inadmissible. You want to admit them? Really? The open borders folks do. They don't care that they're going to come here and rape children or kill women. They don't. Why don't they care? Because they're looking for that delivery service for one reason or another. So they would have you believe. Nothing to see here, folks. Keep moving. Keep right on walking by. Ignore the truth. Ignore the facts. We're going to do everything we can to make certain you don't have the truth or the facts. That's the problem. Amazing, isn't it? That's the situation that we're now confronting. We are now dealing in a world of Orwellian newspeak where we're being lied to every single day. And, and, and where do we go with that? What in the world do we do? Well, we have to pay attention to the details because the devil is in the details. And, and, and so that's the, um, the situation that we're dealing with. Uh, understand what we're, what we're trying to say here, folks. We need to be clear about what we're, what we're facing. What we are facing in the United States today is tyranny from our own government. Therein lies the problem that we face. We are facing a major problem in the United States, and the problem that we face is that we are not being given access to the truth, but we are being flooded by propaganda on a routine basis. On a routine basis, propaganda, lies, misinformation. So this young lady is killed by an illegal alien, and we're told, don't you dare talk about his immigration status. It's irrelevant. It's not irrelevant. A drunk driver who mows down a bunch of people on the sidewalk wouldn't have mowed them down if he was driving legally. It's not legal to drive drunk. By not keeping out criminals, people who have proclivities toward crime, we have a problem. So when we're told that the immigration laws aren't fair, it's about racism, go to Title VIII, United States Code, Section 1182. It's the criminals, it's spies, it's terrorists, it's human rights violators, it's war criminals. Think of the Nazi garbage that we just deported this past week, finally. It took President Trump to get him removed. It's been going on for more than a dozen years. George W. Bush, Barack Obama, this guy was going nowhere. It took the Trump administration to move him out. Move him out. He's believed to be the last surviving Nazi dirtbag in the United States. That's what the immigration laws are about. But don't confuse the globalists with the facts or the truth because they sure as hell don't want you to have the facts or the truth. They are misleading you because they have an agenda. They want the delivery system to work at full speed. Full speed. Damn the torpedoes. Bring in those quote-unquote immigrants. doesn't matter if they're criminals or spies or terrorists because that's the price we pay. They look at people who were killed by these criminals and terrorists as speed bumps on the road to a global society with no borders. With no borders, we cannot defend ourselves. We lock our doors at night for fear of who may come in when we're not looking. That's not antisocial. That's prudent. We all like company, but not when we don't know who the folks are and we're not certain as to what their intentions are. That's why we have an inspections process at the airport. That's why we spend $14 billion a year on Customs and Border Protection and employ more than 60,000 people, including Border Patrol agents and Customs and Border Protection inspectors at ports of entry. By the way, that inspection job was the job I did for the first four years of my career. But they would have us eliminate all of that. Never mind that the 9-11 Commission said that border security was national security. Never mind that they said interior enforcement failures uh, prevented our authorities from detecting terrorists operating in our country. Don't bother about that. Don't worry about that. Let's make sure that we all use this very nice antiseptic language so we mislead everybody and we'll vilify anybody who would dare suggest that we protect ourselves, our families, or our country. America has the most liberal and generous immigration laws. We admit a million lawful immigrants every year, a million. They're immediately placed on the path to citizenship. It's more than the rest of the world combined. Interestingly, Chuck Schumer, a couple of years ago, said that trespassers were dangerous. Trespassers on landmarks and critical infrastructure posed a threat. We needed a federal law, according to Chuck, that would make trespassing on such um, venues a five-year maximum federal felony. 
But the same Schumer says when you trespass on America, you've earned citizenship. Really? You've earned citizenship? by evading the inspections process at ports of entry, Pelosi and Waters and all these other yo-yos will tell you, oh, they entered undocumented. That's not even a real word. It comes right out of the Ministry of Truth from 1984, George Orwell. They entered without inspection. They entered surreptitiously. They snuck in. They trespassed. Now, if they trespassed uh, on, on Liberty Island, according to Mr. Schumer, they should go to jail for five years. But because they trespassed on America, we should give them citizenship. We should reward them for trespassing. This is so insane. This is so off the wall. And you're going to hear the other side screaming about how unfair we're being to immigrants when we talk about the immigration status or lack thereof of this individual who apparently, allegedly, killed this young woman. There's nothing unfair about stating the facts. There's nothing unfair about learning from what went wrong so it doesn't happen again. Insanity has been defined or, or the example given of insanity is doing the same things the same way but expecting a different outcome. We need to understand what went wrong so we can fix the problem. When an airplane crashes, the NTSB and the FAA come out, why? To figure out why it crashed. When Challenger blew up, the NASA convened a panel to figure out what? Why it happened. When 9-11 happened, they commissioned a 9-11 commission. Why? To figure out what went wrong so history isn't allowed to repeat itself. Well, it has repeated itself, not on that scale thus far, thank God, but there's always possibilities, and that's what worries me. That's what keeps me awake at night. But we are absolutely ignoring the lessons that we should be learning. And if you dare suggest that we look at what went wrong in the past to prevent future problems, you're accused of bigotry, racism, hate speech. We become the villains. And Facebook is happy to censor what you write and call it hate speech. The truth becomes hate speech. If that isn't Orwellian, I don't know what is. Because Facebook is the ministry of truth. It really is. So is Twitter. So are all these other so-called social media websites. They want iron-fisted control over the language that we use, the words that we speak, and the messages that we convey. Is that what the founding fathers had in mind? Probably not. Probably not. And you must be clear about this. This is not being politically correct. Political correctness, at least as I understood it, was supposed to mean that you don't use language that insults other people. The N-word or words like it. And you know what? I couldn't agree more. We should never be using that kind of language to describe fellow human beings. It's, the term alien isn't one of those terms. And when you say, well, we're being too politically correct to use the word alien, you're somehow supporting our enemies because they would say see that the word alien is terrible and he used it anyway the term alien is a legal term and our immigration laws define alien simply as being any person not a citizen or national of the united states where in the world is the insult there's no insult folks there is clarity and if you're a con artist you hide in language that obfuscates the truth you engage in double talk you engage in new speak that's what's really happening here. This is not about being considerate of other human beings. It's about obfuscating the truth so no one knows what the hell's going on. So please don't use the idea or the term political correctness to describe censorship. There's nothing politically correct about it, everything Orwellian about it. I also wrote um, a couple of other pieces. I, I think we've covered this pretty well. But just use this as a great example about why DACA would be a disaster. If we can't figure out who this guy is or when he entered the United States and, and, and law enforcement from a bunch of different agencies have been looking at this guy for, for a week now, um, what would an adjudications officer do with thousands of applications flowing across his or her desk uh, on a daily basis? You know, maybe they'd have to process you know, one every 15 or 20 minutes. How much time do you have to, to scrutinize the application? The only outcome is going to be a disaster. I, I also looked at, at uh, three other issues that um, if you go to my article or, or my introduction for my program this evening um, about how Somali refugees were busted in, uh, uh, in Tucson, Arizona. We have a guy who was from Ethiopia, got a Somalian passport. He was living in China. Don't even ask me about that. And then applied for asylum. We admitted him. And then it turned out that he lied and that scars that he had received when he claimed that he suffered 
injury during a terrorist attack were actually, according to intel that our people developed, and it's in, in, in the indictment, were actually injuries he received when he himself was handling explosives. So he and his wife came to America, lied about his identity, lied about their connection with Al-Shabaab. Al-Shabaab, of course, a terror organization linked to Al-Qaeda. And he's here in the United States. Again, immigration fraud. Big issue. No one's talking about it. And nobody wants to hire enough immigration agents because that's the antidote to these problems. E-Verify by itself doesn't solve the problem. People get hired off the books all the time if you're dealing with a crooked employer. And if you're a crooked alien who's here illegally, you lie about your identity and buy a false ID. Easy to defeat E-Verify unless agents are actually out there to conduct investigations. That's what agents do. They're investigators. And that's what politicians for both sides of the aisle don't want. They don't want agents messing with their supply of workers, students, tourists, and especially clients. You see, that's the problem. I also wrote an article about the damage being done by the Democratic Party in attacking the ICE agents, making it personal. This is the most outrageous situation I've ever seen in my entire life. They're basically inciting people to riot and commit acts of violence against federal agents. In my life, I could never imagine anything more despicable or disgusting. This is anti-American. It's seditious activity. Elections are coming. I hope that the voters are smart enough to get rid of these bums. And then the other issue, and it's one you really need to look at, and there's no time to talk about it today, but it's how China is increasingly intrusive in the United States, in schools, on college campuses. The Chinese government, through a, a company that they control, just bought a radio station outside Tijuana, Mexico. That is, it was a Spanish-language cha channel. They're turning it to a Chinese station. They plan to bombard all of Southern California with Chinese-language broadcasts to keep their citizens in this country in line. Let's never forget China is an adversary, and they are a totalitarian country. How we allowed them to get most favored trade status blows my mind. How companies could move their manufacturing facilities to China is beyond me. How we've allowed them to gain control over a big part of our national debt. Crazy beyond words. You know, the communists used to say the capitalists will sell you the rope with which you will hang them. We've been having a fire sale on rope for far too long in Washington. Fortunately, Donald Trump is trying to stop the trend, and that's probably a big part of the reason that he's created uh, such a headache for himself and attracted so many enemies. Uh, I don't always like the language that he uses, but I do believe in his objectives and his vision of America as a sovereign country with sovereign borders. Um, so here we are, the end of another hour. I hope it's helpful for you to understand the issues. If you find my program helpful, if you find the articles helpful, please, folks, share them with your friends and neighbors. You can use the Internet, however you do it. Just get the word out. Be part of my Bucket Brigade of Truth. Get involved. The elections are coming. Get your voice heard. Attend the town hall meetings. Don't be afraid to speak your mind freely. This is America, and the First Amendment will only remain in power so long as we exercise it. So long as we exercise it. Please remember, folks, democracy is not spectator sport. Please get involved. And uh, I hope to see you again next week at the same time, same place, right here on the Michael Cutler Hour. But meanwhile, I wish you all a wonderful weekend. Good night, folks. Hope you'll be watching on the Ingram Angle a bit later on this evening. Don't forget the wave. I'll be looking for you. Good night.